Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Watch me when I kill. Prepare yourself for shock after shock, for horror beyond belief, and spine-tingling suspense that never lets go. Turn them back on, I'm still in here. to witness a shattering adventure in total fright. Sheer terror, the menacing suspense that awaits you when you see Watch me when I kill. Watch me when I kill. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for disc number 30 of the Italian collection by 88 Films. This is Watch Me When I Kill, directed by Antonio Bibdo. The kind of biog stuff on the 88 Films website reads as thusly. It says, Antonio Bibdo, the man who won understandable colour acclaim with his stylish stalker thriller Bloodstained Shadow from 1978, helmed one of the defining Jello shockers in 1977's nightmarish Watch Me When I Kill. For fans of the yellow, yellow peril, golden age, Italian black glove killer mayhem, it doesn't get any better than this suspenseful murder mystery which follows an animalistic knife happy maniac as he cuts and drowns his victims to prohibit a historic secret emerging. Exactly why the bodies are piling up confuses the authorities but the reasoning behind the sudden slash em up activity proves both jarring and jaggedly horrible. And look out for an appearance from legendary Italian genre veteran Paolo Malcio of the House by the Cemetery, New York Ripper, and a sizzling soundtrack from the art pod rockers Trans European Express. Even seasoned Jallo buffs are sure to embrace the many thrills and chills of Watch Me When I Kill, remastered in 4K by the Euro Gore embracing enthusiasts at 88 Films. The special features on this disc, the newly 
transferred four key restoration from the original negative, an uncompressed English LPCM mono, uncompressed Italian LPCM mono with newly translated English subtitles, Danza Macabra and Mendelssohn in Judician Museum Berlin, two short films shot by director Antonio Bigdo, interview with academic Mikhail Coven, um, and a restoration comparison. The technical specs on the disc is region lock to region B, the audio is dual mono LPCM 2.0, the picture is 1080p HD 185 1, the runtime is about an hour and a half, and the, lang the languages are both English and Italian with English subtitles. So this is a movie I am familiar with, I've seen this one a couple of times before actually, but I've never seen it in its blurry form, and I've never seen it actually look this good. Um, I suppose we should probably acknowledge that 88 Films, once again, did a really good job with the restoration. It's not brilliant compared to other 4Ks, but what I do appreciate about it is that they have, from what I would guess, is deliberately left in a bit of that grain to give it a bit of oomph to make it look a bit more like of the time, but very, very clean. The colours are bright and they pop, but like I say, you need a bit of that grain for a movie such as this. It needs, it needs that little something which... It's going to give it its gnarliness. If you take too much of that away, I think you detrimentally impact the movie itself. I mean, I've seen this movie, the first time I saw it was a rip um, online. I've seen it on YouTube as well. And uh, most recently on DVD when we did the Summer Teapot's Top 10 series looking at the 70s, Watch Me When I Kill was in consideration for that as well. So I checked that one out back then. So it's a, mo a movie, like I say, that I'm familiar with quite a bit. Um, interestingly enough, not as sleazy as I remember it being. I remember this one being a lot sleazier than it actually is. Uh, what I love about what Watch Me When I Kill is that I think first and foremost its mystery is actually really good. When you compare it with other Jallo of the time, the Jally subgenre tends to have an issue when it comes to the murder mysteries. The longer the series went on, um, the more preposterous the murder mystery became, the more outlandish the the kills were, and then to the extreme, the more the more preposterous it became to try and work out who the killer actually was, and the reveal seldom made sense. In fact, most of the time you would have a tagged on scene at the end where the police and maybe the the survivor would sit down and recap everything that happened in the film just so you, the audience, knew how ridiculous things were. So you weren't leaving the cinema going, huh? Because that was a possibility. Um, there are a few Jallos that I deeply, deeply, deeply love that by the time they finish, if I think about it too much, my brain starts to hurt because it makes zero fucking sense. Absolutely no sense at all. Um, in the case of this one, Watch Me When I Kill has a really cohesive mystery that actually does feel satisfying and does feel kind of tied up in a nice neat bow at the end. I mean, the end in itself, the very, very end in the movie, is a bit of a cop-out. You get that occasionally in movies like this where they're like, how do we finish it? Uh, kill, kill each other? Yeah, maybe. Fine. Death by suicide, and yeah, that's cool. That'll work, and no one will ask any questions. Case closed. That's right, book them, Bill. Um, you know, th there's a bit of that in here where the ending is kind of tied up very nice and neat so much so that they don't want you asking questions but watch me when I kill for the most part is surprisingly tame compared to other movies of its time period if you imagine 77 by this point we've had Deep Red and Deep Red's kind of reset the barometer of what is you know a giallo thriller and what is a giallo horror um, this movie is more on the thriller side. It's not necessarily an out-and-out -out horror movie. It kind of plays back to the core roots of something like Bird with the Crystal Plumage than it does necessarily with something along the lines of Deep Red or Tenebrae or Torso, for example. So it's a bit tame in those respects, but the kills themselves are actually pretty vicious. Um, there is a, a kind of oven death sequence in here which evokes... Um, what was the name of that movie now? Is it a Absurd? There's a bit of that in here, uh, which felt a bit like what? Um, and then there's a couple of kind of gnarlier, kind of slashy, slashy kills, which I think are done really, really well. The acting's surprisingly good as well, <laughs> which I know my voice kind of goes high-pitched there, but 
at this time period, once again, we're, you're just not looking for that. So when it happens, it's slightly surprising. Um, that I thought that was quite interesting. And then you have this really cool soundtrack coming in from a Trans Europe Express. And it works. It surprisingly works. At this time period, once again, Goblin's already started doing Deep Red. So it's like, we need to get prog rockers in to score our movies now. Because that's what the Italians did. If something sold well, rather than trying to work out why it sold well, what they would do is they would tick all the bases. So... Oh, right, right, right. the kills have to be vicious because the kills in that movie were vicious but they also had a prog band scoring them so let's have that in there uh, and can we also have a flashback scene that does this and can we have this, this and this so it becomes a template it's why they copied so many um, Hollywood movies um, and had so many amazing rip-offs but there's a slightly off-kilter approach to how they rip off something which I deeply, deeply love so what was interesting is when you look at something like Bloodstained Shadow which comes the fall week, which was an early movie we discussed way, 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 way back. I think it's within the first five of the Italian collection. Bibdo changes tack quite a bit when he comes to direct that movie. And that one is more a tradi- like very traditional giallo, very soft palette. Still kind of vicious, but, you know, it's more in line with something like Don't Torture a Duckling than it would be with something like Four Flies in Grey Velvet. So... You, you get that feeling that he, he does this one, he gets a bit of notoriety off this one, goes in and does something a bit softer, which I, you know, I deeply, deeply love as well. Very, it's like hyper-stylized Bloodstained Shadow. This one has a bit of a raw feel about it, which I think works really, really well. Like I say, the restoration is awesome. I, I, I really like it. I think there's a good amount of grain in there, which is worth checking out. Um, the two shorts on here, the Danza Macabra and Mendelssohn and Judician Museum, Berlin. Um, both of them are interesting little art house pieces, but neither one are great. If I'm honest, I I, I find the you know the he has this one single idea and kind of drives it into the ground. So I was I, I wasn't overly impressed with them. I did, however, love the interview with Michael Coven, who I don't often. I mean, I've got his book um, on, on Jalos, which I think is one of the most definitive books ever written on the subgenre is obviously very knowledgeable but he talks about this one with a a degree of reverence that his academic peers do not and that was quite interesting because I remember reading in his book you know a bit of of what he likes and what he dislikes specifically about the subgenre that had you asked me ahead of time would watch me when I kill be one that he would speak of fondly I would have probably said no but he surprised me by kind of cutting through a lot of that and saying, you know, it works here in this aspect and it does this right in this aspect. And, um, you know, what he appreciated about it, interestingly enough, is a lot of what I appreciated about the movie, which is, at its kind of core, it's a really good murder mystery. And I enjoy those sort of things. Those are the the kind of bedrock of my youth. I watched a ton of Agatha Christie, loved a love, I had a lot of love for fictional um, crime novels and stuff like that so it's why I probably love the genre as much as I do and why I overlook so many of the glaring flaws is that first and foremost I'm I'm a lover of that kind of style of story so uh, Watch Me When I Kill does that really 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 well um, overall I mean it's a great watch the the Blu-ray is definitely worth picking up even if so some of the special features are not amazing um, the print itself is brilliant, uh, it's never looked better, it's never sounded better and if you're in the UK, you've got our UK player, uh, then you should you know, take a punt, get Watch Me When I Kill, add it to your collection, add it to your rotation, it's definitely worth checking out. Would I say it is essential giallo? Probably not because it does a few things slightly different to the rest of the genre but would I say that it will broaden your horizons when thinking about the genre it's an absolute hell yes definitely will you'll get a lot out of this one and um, hopefully you'll return to it time and time again Uh, in terms of grades for Watch Me When I Kill it's a 4 it's a 4 out of 5 for this one really really enjoyed this one loved coming back to it can't wait to check it out again Um, I'm moving house soon And as part of that move, I'm getting a new TV for my, what will be, cinema room. And yeah, I'm looking forward to plugging, you know, a a, a nice big TV into my 4K player. Switching that 4K player on and checking this out on a bigger screen as well. I think 
that's the way you, it, I mean, I would love to have grown up in the 70s in Italy and just had a wealth of these movies playing at cinemas all around. And any given day, you could stumble into any cinema and sit down and watch a Jello. And that, to me, is something we've kind of lost uh, and something that's kind of bitching about that time period. <laughs> 